Welcome to the Drone Blocks Drone Light Show Quick Start Guide. First, we'll review the contents of your Light B kit. In the larger protective case, you'll find 10 Light B drones, 30 batteries, and accompanying battery chargers. There is also a set of sticker labels for us to label the drones with. However, don't label them yet. It is important that we label the drones according to the order you power them up. So let's hold off until we get to that step. In the smaller protective case, you'll find five repeaters with accompanying antennas and corresponding adjustable stands. And we'll show you how to set up the repeaters now. Simply screw the dome antennas to the repeaters labeled A0, A1, A2, and A3. The control repeater, labeled with a CO, gets a standard antenna. Next, you can open the adjustable stands by tripoding the legs and raising the stand using the knobs. Attach the repeaters to the 3 screw attachment on top. We'll fast forward here as we build the stands. Please note that there are more stands under the foam block. Finish by extending all stands to their maximum height. Now, we'll review the placement of the repeaters to form the grid. It's important to do this on a mostly flat and even surface. We don't recommend doing this on grass as it can affect the takeoff and landing of the drones. These drones can be used outdoors in mild winds, but any winds faster than 7 miles per hour may cause issues with your drone's flight paths. To form the grid, each repeater has to be placed 10 feet or 3 meters from one another. This is to keep the real life grid as congruent as possible with the grid in the module. The placement and order of the repeaters is also imperative. Repeaters A0 through A3 must be placed in a clockwise order, beginning with A0 on the bottom left of the grid, then A1 on the top left, A2 on the top right, and A3 on the bottom right. The control repeater will be placed center, exactly midway between A0 and A3. It's also important to be sure all antenna arrows are facing towards the center of the imagined grid. We'll speed this up as we measure out each repeater. What could be useful in this scenario is some sidewalk chalk to chart out the grid, as we'll be measuring the placement of the drones themselves later as well. Depending on the iteration of Light B kit you received, your repeaters may be powered via a simple battery attachment. If not, you'll have a USB power bank included in your kit, which simply plugs into the USB-C ports on the repeaters. The LED indicator will blink when power is connected. If your model includes a battery, you can disregard this step. On our control repeater, we will be connecting the USB directly to our PC. Next, let's dive into the drone formation control system on our PC. Log in and we'll first start in the design module. Add our drone count to 10 and initiate an 8x8 grid size, which works best for this number of drones. We're going to import a pre-designed case, which is the 10 drone demo show. And you'll see the show's design populate the outline of the show. This all may seem a bit complicated at first, and so we're creating a separate how-to video focusing specifically on the design module that goes further in depth so you can create and choreograph your own show. That video will be coming in the fall of 2023. If you cycle through the show, you'll see the choreographed movements and changing LED colors of the drones. Pretty cool, huh? So then we're going to save this as is, exit, and enter the control module, which allows us to actually set up and launch the show. For now, we're going to load the case we just saved here. The first time you boot up the control module, it's important that we set the module to mode 3 before getting started. To do this, we will use the keystroke Control Shift L, which will bring up the mode option dropdown, where we will select mode 3. Again, your show won't launch unless we are in mode 3, so hitting Control Shift L we can enter mode 3 and restart the program so it opens in mode 3. When we reopen, we will again load the case we had just saved.
Next, you'll see we have a few options to communicate to the drones and repeaters. We're just going to use the USB because we are plugged directly into the computer. And next, we'll pop over into the preview module by hitting the icon that looks like an eye. You can see here a preview of the light show once again as you cycle through the show. The LEDs changing colors. And what's most important is that you see where the drones are supposed to be located within the grid. So we'll use this as a guide to where we place our actual light bee drones on the grid we just created in the real world with our repeaters. So we're going to use this as our reference and break out the measuring tape. Now that we're ready to power up and place our light bees, it's important to note that if this is your first time turning on the drones, you should have your sticker labels handy. The first drone that is turned on will be designated drone number one. The second drone turned on will be drone number two and so on. If the drones are labeled incorrectly, you can renumber by removing a drone using the red button in the control module dashboard. We'll begin by placing a charged battery into our first drone. Ours is already labeled number one. The power button is located on the side when we are ready to boot up. Next, we will measure out and place all 10 drones within our imagined grid, according to the grid in the module. Each drone should be placed three feet or one meter apart in the order congruent with the module. The part of the drone where the battery is should be facing towards the control repeater. Once all drones are aligned, we will return to the control module and power up each drone, in order. As they connect, their information will populate in the module. Again, if this is your first time powering up the drones, you are designating the number of those drones, so have your sticker labels handy. So we'll fast forward here as all the drones connect. And once we have all 10 drones powered up, we'll send a test signal via the LEDs to confirm a successful connection. Next, we run the calibration to let the drones know where they are in relation to the repeaters. Successful. Now that we are calibrated, we're going to send the task out to the fleet of drones so they can load the drone show instructions. That will take about a minute. You could watch as each drone loads the code as indicated by the yellow status light. When the code is successfully loaded and ready to launch, the status light will turn green. If the status light turns red, that means there was an error, and the module will attempt to resend the code. You can see here there was an error with drone number one, and now it has been resolved. Now that the task is fully loaded, let's review quickly the drone information box. As we saw, the top left indicator gauges the strength of our connection signal, the middle indicator gauges the verification of the task data received, and the final indicator will light green when we launch the mission, showing that the drone is in the process of executing a task. Within the green square is a battery power indicator. At 8.1, 8.2, we are at a good charge. As we take off and battery is being used, you'll see that value go down and become yellow and eventually red when the battery is running out. As you saw before, we then have the LED test button on the bottom right and the height indicator at the bottom left you'll be able to watch that value change as the drones are mid-flight. Now, we are ready for takeoff. You'll notice the stop all button in case you need to abort the mission for any reason. Enjoy the show.